Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Ryan Rice. On this episode, we go after some redemption. You know, I don't ask this this much, but we're almost at that 1K subscriber mark. And if you don't know YouTube, when you hit that 1K mark, it used to be a lot more in the past, uh, you become, you can uh, apply to be monetized. And when you're monetized, you do make some money off the ads. It's not a lot, but it's something. And if you guys have been following along, you guys know I do Heroes on the Water the low country chapter here in south carolina and we donate our time take out our first responders and veterans but we also buy gear out of our own pocket to give to our first responders and veterans and we also been uh, reaching out to rios they've been uh, donating some sun some sunglasses as well which is making it a little bit nicer you know and giving away a little bit more i try to give away as much as i can afford at these events but if i hit that monet you know if i get monetized the little bit of income i'll get from youtube will help pay for that gear that we give to our first responders and, and veterans when we take them out in the water to me that means a, means a lot because it gives them something they can take home and keep for life if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button and help our cause we really really appreciate it so we're starting off with a crankbait right now just real quick in the morning just to see if we can get any quick active bites then we're going to change over to the ned so if you guys watched my last video, I basically named it, I made a mistake. And the mistake was going back to the same body of water two days in a row where the previous day I did not catch anything. So I feel that the fish are still gonna be finicky. So if you watched that last video, you realize I was fishing the Texas Rig Mad Fatty, which is about a seven inch worm about yay long. And I was fishing the Cinco, which the hook's right in the middle. The fish were just grabbing, you know, that soft plastic, or like right at the ends, right at the tails. So to alleviate that problem, hopefully today, is I got a Ned tied on. So it's so small that it's gonna be kind of hard to miss them. You know, so we got the TRD Tickler from Z-Man, a couple different colors. We also got from Rumblefish, I think it's called the Bludger, which has that little tip. I have a video on this, a little cool. It's like, almost like a stick bait, but it has like a little bit of a, you know, like a little bit of a tail that moves around. And we also have the Sneaky Pete, which is almost like a mini paddle tail. So that's what we got for our Ned selection. We also came with the Z-Man Fatties that we're gonna rig up Texas Rig, which is a lot smaller worm of their Mag Fatties. So it's a five inch worm. We're gonna Texas Rig this as well. I still think we're gonna have to fish finesse today just because they're not, uh, not being aggressive. You can see it's a lot smaller of a tail. I mean, sorry, a lot smaller of a worm. It's only five inch, it's got a slit in the middle. So you can use a, you know, a jig head on this. You can Texas rig this and you can Carolina rig it. You can do whatever you want with this, but it's a lot smaller. So that hook's gonna be way back here when I rig it. So they really just have to be grabbing just back here for me to be missing it. So of course I'm fishing my Ned rig on the Cash and Element Ned rig rod, which is a six foot 10 is the length I chose. Cause I like to have my rods a little bit shorter than probably most people, especially being on the kayak. And it's a medium action six foot 10 rod but since i've changed over the cash and rods the sensitivity on my drop shot rod my ned rig rod are a world of difference from what i was fishing before i'm really liking these rods a lot. so with this ned rig especially with the tickler it's got those little bit of tentacles so we're almost going to dead stick this and just do small little very little subtle movements it's a very subtle finesse approach but you know just with those the current of the fish swimming up to it and the current of the water you can get a little bit of movement out of that tickler and we're just going to kind of dead stick it and fish very very slow today i know it's not the most fun thing to watch somebody do but that's what's catching fish right now with their you know being so finicky all right guys fish on oh, there's a nice one too all right we got a nice one on the, on the crankbait Come on, baby. I'm keep pressure, but I don't want to keep too much pressure that it comes off. Ah, look at this bad boy, guys. Woo! Nice. Sweet, sweet, sweet. You hit that nicely too. It wasn't a small strike, which was good. All 
All right, guys. 21 inches. Probably a good five pounder. Not bigger. You know, so I wanted to see, you know, because fishing along the bank with the uh, Ned rig, it was very quiet. So I'm like, you know what? I wonder if they're down a little deeper and actually moving off the bank. That's why we changed over to the crankbait and we caught that 21 inch fish, you know, back out here in about six feet of water. So we're going to continue with the crankbait for a bit and see if we can find some more that size in this depth. And you know I love the crankbait. So if I can pick this crankbait up, cover a lot of water and catch these little green guys, you know I'm a happy, uh, happy camper when that happens. Uh, I just don't know if that was just a uh, a one and done fluke or we can grab a couple more here but obviously we got a nice one to bite on the crankbait. Even last time I was out here and I was going after these fish, a lot of these fish were small. You know, even fishing the bigger uh, mag fatties and end up catching a smaller fish. I'm up in the air, you know, I'm going to be playing this game all day back and forth with the crankbait and soft plastics. All right, we're back to the soft plastics right now. We ran around with the crankbait and nothing else bit. So we change over to the fatties from Z-Man Texas rig. Gives us a little bit more speed as far as using a soft plastic to get around here and try. Uh, we're going to hang in this one part of the water for probably about another hour with the soft plastic and then we're gonna move spots but we got a lot of surface activity we've got a lot of bait fish but some of the bass are floating around as much over here right now there yeah, we're getting a nibble and i ripped it out of his mouth right back to the same thing ripping it out of their mouth so it's got to be small or not giving it enough time the bait now they go back to the ned or stick with this Well, we know there's a fish there, so we're gonna follow up with the Ned. So either it's really small, not a bass, or a very finicky bass. All right, you got it this time. Oh. Well, that explains why I'm missing them, because it's a small bass. All right, relax. All right, guys, I guess that's why I missed them on the bigger baits. Definitely smaller fish. So that may have been the reason why we were missing them so much last time because they were all small fish. So maybe I will keep trying the Ned to see if there's any big ones along here before we do move on. Because uh, I know I did miss an 18 inch or at least last time. That may have been my biggest problem is that I was going after big fi uh, small fish last time and they just weren't taking the whole thing in their mouth. But that's why I got the Ned tied on today. We already qualified for the uh, national championship and the state challenge championship already for the year based on points. So really we're just fishing for fun and content and we still want the big fish obviously because it's just fun to catch. It's not going to be stressful the rest of the year because we already qualified. Uh, ooh, fish is chasing it. And we got him on. As I was talking to you guys, you chase that right back to the boat. Nice. Well, speaking of that, we still want to catch fish, but the super big ones are not as important or as stressful. See how big you are. All right, guys, we got 14 and three quarters. All right, guys, that puts us at three fish. We got the 21, the 14 and three quarters, and that little dink, whatever size that was. I didn't even measure it. Uh, we're gonna continue fishing the Ned Rig since we just had one follow us back along this here still. We're gonna hang in this area for quite a bit. You know, this is a shallow area, but also gets deep. And I know this area holds fish. That's where I catch the majority of my fish when they come here. But we are gonna go to the backside of the lake later on today when it slows up here. All right guys, fish on. Not what we wanted. We hooked them right in the eye. You side hooked this one. It'd be easier just to do it like this. There we go. Quick release without causing any more damage. 
So we did make a move. It was getting kind of quiet over there. We're back to just running along with the crankbait. I'm gonna run here with the crankbait for a bit. Then I'm gonna come circle back around, work the bank with a soft plastic, uh, move on to another spot. So that's, I think that's what our, uh, I guess you could say our routine is gonna be the rest of the day is hit everything with a crankbait a little bit deeper and then work the bank with soft plastics, whether it's a Ned, Texas rig. I even got the Cinco ready to My go. Wife said to me the other day, you know, maybe more people would watch your videos if you didn't show your feet. I says, really? He says, yeah, a lot of people don't like feet. Well, it's better than other body parts that I may show. Comment below if you don't like my feet. Yeah, we're getting small nibbles again. It must be smaller fish. Using the Texas rig right now, but definitely has to be a small mouth not to take this in. But whatever it is, it's sitting right up there. Alright guys, fish on. Oh, just like last time. And I lost it. I literally dropped that right on his head as soon as it hit the water and went down about a few inches. It was already taken. He ran out this way, set the hook, thought I had him, and he dropped it. Alright guys, fish on. Fish on. Oh. You see small little guys. Yeah, he's probably about 12 inches. I guess we can give him a quick measure. 12 and a half. All right, that's number four bass. So in kayak terms, we're gonna still try for our five fish limit and beyond. And hopefully a little bit more in size. There's definitely a lot of small ones floating around right now. I think that's what keeps playing with me uh, with the uh, soft plastics. You know, I, that one I caught on the crankbait, I think that was just a, a lucky catch. I don't think they're that aggressive yet. So I still think they're finicky and have to use soft plastics to catch them. There you guys, fish on. It's a crappy. A nice one too. Pretty decent looking, pretty nice slab there. All right, hold on there, Tonto. Not what we're after, but it's a nice size. All right, guys, fish on. That's a little nicer one. Baby, stay on. And that's why we are going to continue fishing the Ned because they are barely committing. And we are not going to miss them like we have been. Probably about 15. Yeah. Almost 15 right on the nose. There we go, guys. 14 and 3 quarters. So we got our limit of bass. So it makes us happy. Makes us feel like we got our redemption now from our last trip out. It makes us feel complete. So where we're fishing now, it's pretty much just like one big gigantic massive root ball underneath from a tree. So we still want to fish the Ned, but we have to fish it almost weedless. And the only way to do that, to be honest with you, is with either a weedless setup hook or we use the Elastec stuff, which we're going to use the uh, TRD Tickler. And you can only do this with Elastec. <laughs> Sorry, big fish just jumped. You can only really do this with Elastec because of the durability. But we just go in about an eighth of an ounce. It's almost like a Texas rig. Get this pushed up on the keeper itself that's built into their net. And almost just then just really spin it around and wire uh, Yeah, wire it. Rig it almost Texas style weedless and just slightly push it through and keep it underneath there. So when they bite down, it's still gonna penetrate that hook through. And that's pretty much a weedless setup right there. Let's get it situated the way you want it. And we got our little ticklers there. But it's really the only way you can fish a Ned truly weedless. So now I can cast that in there and I can feel like all the roots I'm going over, but the hook's not getting caught. 
on the wood itself and I'm just bouncing through the structure that's underneath here without getting caught. And this is where that big fish just jumped. So we're gonna try to fish this for a bit and see if I can get that one to come after it. All right, uh. I just lost another one. I wasn't going to, but I'm gonna throw on a Cinco. I just don't want to lose any more deadheads. I've lost about four of them today. So if it's a bigger fish, it's gonna take this take this bait into its mouth and I should be able to get it. But if it's a small fish, obviously I'm gonna keep missing them. You know, when it's in the water, you feel like you have such more of a pull, but it ends up being like a 12 inch fish anyway. So we're gonna try the Cinco because the power fish, power fishing is just not working. It's nibbling at it. It's got it. All right, I got it this time. I don't think it's a bass again. I think it's another bowfin. Yep, another bowfin, guys. Another bowfin. That's what we got last time. Come here. Ugly bastard that you are. He's gonna freak out, isn't it? If you just calm down, I'll get the hook out of your mouth. See? Let's calm down and I'll get it out. All right, get out of my boat. Now that I probably just woke up the whole neighborhood and all the fish probably scurried away. Hopefully we can get another bass yet today, guys. We've got blood all over my leg from that thing. Hey, both fins are fun to catch, but not what we want. You ever have a really bloody fish and uh, you get blood all over yourself and you send a picture to your wife and they're like, oh my God, I hurt myself and they freak out. I do that every now and then. All right, guys. I think it's a fish. You got another one. It's a turtle. Thought that fought off a weird. Come here, buddy. Ugh. What do you guys say? We caught a wide array of stuff today. All right, don't snap me. It's almost out of you. Come on, tuck your head back in there so you don't snap my finger. All right, Mr. Turtle, so long. That's from the other one. Well, at the rate we're catching different things here, I guess next is an alligator. All right, guys, fish on. Still another baby. And you're off. Flop, flip, flop, flop, flip. Here, get back here. Probably about, it's probably about a 12 incher. Get out of here. Well, we're gonna end it on that note. After catching the turtle and that little small 12 inch bass, I think we're gonna stop it there. You know, I was trying to I was hoping they would be more aggressive this time around. We got that 121 inch bass on the crankbait, but that was it. Everything else has been on soft plastics. They're still being finicky. They're still small. The bigger ones are just not moving or being smart enough not to chase that soft plastics. But if you're having a hard time catching fish and you're missing a lot of fish like I did on the previous episode, 
uh, change over to the net like I did. You know, it's a small profile bait. It's going to give that hook right there. So if they, that fish grabs that bait, as soon as you feel that pressure, you should be able to set that hook and get that fish without losing them because that's already in their mouth. So, you know, that little nibble that you feel is not usually a nibble. It's them, in, you know, engulping into their mouth. And so it's already in their mouth. So set that hook and you should be able to get that fish. But I'm hoping, you know, in the next week or two, the mentality of these fish turn around and we can go back to our power fishing that we all love to do and cover a lot of water and get some more bigger fish, you know, this spring and summer coming up. You know, I want to get that, you know, 23 inch fish this year and the year 23. Uh, you know, 2023 to help make it our, you know, to get our personal best lengthwise. And then after that, we're going to go on for that 24 inch fish. But to get that, we may have to go down to Florida for that. But uh, as always, guys, I really appreciate it. If you guys haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Like I said, you know, the proceeds are going to help go to Heroes on the Water and me donating some gear to these veterans and first responders who really appreciate it more than you know. So it just, it just makes it a little bit more special when we go out and donate our time to these guys, these ladies and gentlemen who are our first responders who, you know, give up a lot of their own life, a lot of their own family time to help protect us. You know, same thing with our veterans and our current military. They give up their life and their personal time and their family time to help protect us here in America. And, you know, we got to show them some love. So, you know, anything that you guys can do as far as, you know, subscribing and liking and helping our channel grow, it really helps. So as always, guys, be safe on the water and I'll catch you guys in the water. And hopefully next time out, we get some bigger fish.